So this is uh, uh, the rationalization uh, of uh, an improvement with ICT while keeping uh, the, the expenditure uh, 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 in control. It is extremely important. And then, of course, uh, all the e-learning e and access to knowledge is uh, also uh, guaranteed by ICT. So uh, the world is changing. And thank you for helping us to understand how well uh, this is uh, doing uh, for us all. We are dealing with the difficulties to share knowledge among doctors. And so the result is high cost to give continuous support to a patient. How to solve this problem? The idea is, uh, OK, we can build a, an infrastructure that reach a patient in his house, reach the practitioner, medical practitioner, reach the specialist, build a community on the web, a sort of social network. The acronym A. HAIP means uh, Active and Healthy Aging Innovation Partnership. What is it about? Uh, what is it addressing? Um, the partnership at this moment is uh, given direction by a steering group of high-level personalities and involvement of uh, member states, uh, regions, um, many of the interest groups around patients, uh, elderly, uh, carers, informal and informal carers, doctors, nurses, as well as a wide industry participation. And they have advised to focus this on three areas that roughly correspond to the life conditions of elderly people, namely the stages of uh, prevention and early diagnosis, the stages of care and cure, and the stages of active and independent living. And how we actually will continue keeping the balance of our society with the aging population. Do we need to import workers? Do we need to be more tolerant and open uh, labor markets? Do we need to do something uh, as innovation in the economy? Or we have to keep ourselves healthier and probably to extend the uh, retirement age and to get retired at the age of 70 probably? Is this our future or the future of our children? How do we deal with this? I don't know. So that's why we are here to see proposals, to listen to you, and see what we actually could do. Many things are there. We have an action plan for aging. Well, we have a, a strategy. Uh, European strategy for the digital agenda. We have uh, to, to, to we are working on uh, on the new directive for uh, uh, cross-border healthcare for for our patient, and all the benefits that are coming down from uh, trying to uh, reconcile uh, innovations and uh, and uh, healthcare and uh, aging well mm? in terms of efficiency, in terms of dependence life, in terms of uh, of uh, of quality of access, etc. Translational medicine is a new concept that includes the basic findings that are immediately applied to the car. For this uh, perspective, we need three different tools, technology, the personal genomics, and the first application of this is the concept of pharmacogenomics, because it's important to reduce the cost of the treatment. Now we are ready to put all this information in a very uh, simple uh, digital transformation uh, tools. The next step is to putting this online. We can put together post-genomic information in order to obtain it, a very complex uh, profile for this specific individual. Drugs are poison. I mean, it, they create side effects, and we have to treat those side effects as well. So uh, this whole uh, pharmacogenetics, and I guess uh, one uh, essential part of this project that we are about to, to, to uh, 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 exploit here, uh, helps to reduce those side effects. This means that we are not longer probably, hopefully, spending all this money for treating you know, the bad sides, the dark side of, the, of those drugs. But we probably need that money for uh, doing our, our work in pharmacogenetics and in personalized medicine. If we have patients 
that they're not in the hospital because we treat them with drugs, that's a huge accomplishment, uh, not only for the well-being of this individual, but also for society. The EU roadmap for e-health consists of linking the points of care. This is something that we've been doing since the 1990s and still now. Also then connecting individuals with health information networks and moving towards a full picture of the individual's <coughs> health status. Linking all the points of care, the general practitioners, health authorities, social services. This is again linked to the vision of integrated care, but not only the labs, the home care, now, another part of our program at the same research program is the virtual physiological human. It's based on the ideas of the International Physiome Project, and its definition within an ICT context is a methodological and technological framework that once established will enable the investigation of the human body as a single complex system. You need a wide variety of types of research. It's no longer that you do one experiment and that tells you the thing, and you go on to the next. Typically, you have whole teams of people providing lots of different bits of information in to actually make some progress to knowledge and understanding. That means we're producing a lot of data. Right, now, data is key. It's how to efficiently provide scientists with access to the resources they need. Now, this is not something that's been solved everywhere. In most of the European funding programs, these things are divided into different categories. So we have thematic programs, which are, which are subjects of research. We have re physical research infrastructures, which are techniques people can use. We have e-infrastructures, which is another one. Actually, you've got, to go, you've got to cut across that. So the way that things are set up at the moment makes it inefficient for us to do the things we want to do. If we don't tackle that problem, we will stay inefficient. So that's the challenge I would set for the future.